in a comfortable seat. I invite you to close your eyes and if there are any other technical issues, please let me know. <clears throat> and just find your breath, friends. Start to breathe deeper. <clears throat> let the inhale broaden all the way up to the top of the skull. And allow your exhale to soften even down through your pelvic floor. So you just think of the pelvis like this bowl that's uniformly open on all sides. As you're breathing here, friends, start to slow down that breath even more. So let each inhale and each exhale linger a little bit longer. It's so easy to forget the importance of silence uh, on the inside when there is a lot of noise on the outside or from the outside world. So let's use this hour together, whether you're practicing live with this group or doing a recording at a later time. Either way, like just really honoring the practice of going into the darkness, into the depths of yourself. Into spirit, into life, into prana. into that healthy acknowledgement of evolving into who you are. Continuing to give yourself permission and freedom to evolve, to change, to grow. You don't have to be the same person you were a month ago, a year ago, or, or even yesterday. It can be continual evolution. Continual redirection of the energy of yourself. Starting with a little neck work, do some little neck circles on your own here, tipping the head one side, rolling the chin down, going up the other way. I invite you to work really passively right now, especially if you're similar to me and you kind of like the more active and intense practices that push, push. <laughs> And really let there be a liquidness, even just to this really simple movement of rolling your neck out. Soften your eyes. And notice what's so cool is when you let yourself soften your breath, it's, it's not so, so difficult to have that really long, rich, velvety breath. And eventually find your head back into the center. We'll start with shoulder rolls. Go forward and up and back and down. Again, finding that richness of not overworking, right? Make the movement big, make the movement really big. Spacious, lift it, squeeze it back, but invite a yin nature to it, a softness. And rotate your shoulders the other direction a couple of times, back up, forward and down. Where are you over efforting? Is it the jaw? Is it the eyes?
Finding center, you guys. Let's take the head over to the right, right ear, right shoulder. Take your right hand and hold your left ear. So you're just reaching all the way over like that. Yeah. And then just gently pull the head a little more to the right side. Then stay here and just open and close your jaw a couple times. And notice what comes up in this side neck here. These muscles are called your scaly muscles. And um, you know, the, the jaw obviously related to the neck. So see what comes up for you there. We're gonna stay on the side and then just bring your nose down like you're almost like you're sniffing your armpit. <laughs> Hold the back of your skull and pull down that way. So it's a similar stretch, but you'll get a little more into the back side of your neck. Hello, Pauline, welcome. So nice, inhale, come back to center. We'll go to the other side, tip the right hand, relax. Tip the left ear to your left shoulder. Reach the left hand for the bottom of your right ear. And just be thoughtful to not pull too hard on these, right, just the right amount. So you feel a nice healthy length, but not an overbearing, um, aggressive feeling. And then try opening and closing your jaw. Oh, and close. We'll slowly rotate nose down towards your left armpit. Pull more a bit on the back, the back right side of the head, and pull up and over. And they say that, you know, scientifically they say it takes about 30 seconds into a stretch for the muscles to really release. Um, so just giving yourself some time in the stretch to discover what's there and what might benefit from letting go. Inhale, slowly come back to center, <clears throat> bringing your hands to your heart. I invite you to take a brief moment to set your intention for your practice this evening, this Earth Day, this, this sunny day we've had here, in, at least in San Diego, and just a vibrancy of, again, an offering to yourself to grow, to evolve, to maybe even surprise yourself with, with what's next. Allow the head to come down, take a full breath. Gently release, slowly open the eyes, release your hands, make your way to all fours. We'll go to the hands and do the knees. Feel free to cushion your knees if you have an extra blanket or cushion. We'll start with some movement of the spine. So we'll start with some cat-cow. <laughs> I'll just practice off my mat because my cat's in the way. <laughs> so you guys inhale, lengthen the spine, go broad through your collar. And exhale, round your back and get a good little tuck and a healthy curl of the tail. And then on your own, repeating a few rounds like that. And of course, adding any little added movements that you like, be it a side bend, letting the ribs expand laterally. Even lingering a little bit longer in one side of it, like maybe the cat pose or the cow pose feels like there's something to achieve in a longer lingering there, right? not rushing through it. <laughs> Ooh. So good, and we'll start with the left leg. So take the left knee out to the side. The right foot can kick stand out and just do some circular kind of hip warm up here. Easy, very similar to what we do in down dog when we lift our leg and warm up, but we're just keeping it a little easier on the knee. Making circles one way. And then make circles the other way, retracing circles. Well, gate pose, you're gonna push that leg all the way out to the left. The foot comes flat, you slide yourself back and up. Yeah. 
like so you're standing on the right knee and the left leg straight out right arm up left hand slides down your left leg you reach through the right side of your ribs now let's stay here make it a little more dynamic on your exhale look down and do a little crunch so the ribs face more down and then the inhale, do a little back bend in the side stretch. You rotate the heart up. And try that like two or three more times. Round your back, gaze more down with not only your head, but also the heart. And then inhale, open up. Ooh, so good. We'll make our way back to all fours. Simply place the hands on the ground. Try to transition lightly so the joints are happy. And take the left leg back. <clears throat> take stand the left foot out a little angle so it's easy to lift the right leg and do some circles with the right knee, right hip. And then retrace the other direction. Yeah, cool. And then gate pose, right leg straight out all the way to the side. Let the foot come flat. By the way, the left foot can kind of come back to neutral, rise yourself up. Inhale, exhale, arc over to the right side. So this is this whole left side of your body that's getting longer. Yeah. You can stay here and add a little dyna dynamism to it. Round down, gaze to the earth, lift from the bottom of the left ribs. And inhale, gaze up, adding a safe little back bend. Opening up the deep part of your belly. Exhale around. Opening. You just move with your own breath, you guys. Take your time. We get our way back to all fours. Simply place the hands, place the right leg back. Let's go to a down dog. So again, not too many active poses in this class, just a few to warm up our hips. Again, I'm ready. So lift the hips, pedal out your legs a bit, left and right, wag your tail. You get the fingers spread pretty wide and grip your fingers so there's the solidity to the foundation of your dog. And then step your feet a bit wider, about as wide as a yoga mat, and start to walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Bend your knees slightly, hold opposite elbows and hang in a ragdoll pose. Let the head dangle, shake a little side to side. And depending on you know, your degree of flexibility in the hamstrings, you might have to bend the knees a lot on this one and that's okay. Right, just make sure there's again, not an over strenuous feeling or an over strained feeling of any, any muscle group at all. Release the hands, half lift, put the hands on the shins, work lots of space through the spine. Then slide the hands up to your hips and we'll come to standing all the way up to vertical. And turn yourself to the long edge of your yoga mat and step your feet really wide apart. Yeah, bend your knees and bigger hands upon them. And have the feet parallel or you can even do a little pigeon toe of the feet slightly turning in your toes to get the hips more open behind you. Then using your arms, try to stretch your belly more, more open. So it's like you're getting lots of space in the, in the low back. We'll do some little dips on your own. Twist one shoulder down, twist, twist, twist. Eventually you can switch sides. I invite you to please go with your own breath here. Again, just a little warm up here before we get to some more passive and restorative poses. Again, I just wanna build some heat for you all into your hips, into your back. So the longer holds can be not only a little safer, but more enjoyable. Cool. Forward fold, hold, uh, touch the ground. Extend your legs as much as you like. Keep a bend if you need. Let the head dangle. Relax, you can maybe sway again. Um, Maybe do a different arm variation that you might know of, such as holding the feet or even intertwining your fingers behind your back if you wish. 
Letting the intuition really guide the, this home restore practice. And slowly start to come up halfway, straighten your arms, bend your knees to stand up, try to keep good alignment in the spine, so not over slouching too much. We'll stay wide, we'll turn the right toes forward, put the right elbow on the right leg for a side stretch, left arm overhead reaching, side angle pose, five breaths. Stay here or again, that dynamic thing I showed you before, you can exhale, do a little round down, Look towards the ground or towards your cat, where my cat is. And then inhale, start to open a bit up. Little twist, little heart opener to the sky. Exhale, looking down. <clears throat> and inhale to open it up. Last time, full breath. Use an inhale to stand up. So inhale, rise all the way up, straighten the legs, turn the right toes in, you can put your hands on your hips. It's typically the most comfortable as we switch sides. Left toes forward, right foot parallel, or again, a little pigeon toe is cool. Left elbow, left leg, right arm across the ear. Extended side angle pose. And you can stay here, a little more static, or work the ribs. Exhale, round down, pull the back of the ribs up. And inhale, keep that full as you twist and open your heart a little to the sky. Stand up again on an inhale, rise up, put your hands on your hips. Turn the feet parallel and we'll step the feet all the way together now. So you just come all the way to the center. Step towards the front of your yoga space. And do a liquid slow sun A. So inhale, feet steady, arms up. Breathe in, a little back bend if you want it. Exhale, slow forward fold, hinge at your hips. Keep the hips wide. Inhale, hands can touch the shins or you could just do fingertips on the ground, half lift. Exhale, plank pose. And one of my favorite, favorite things to do from plank. So once you get there, it's called knees, chest, chin. Elbows wide, just put the knees down first. Then the chest down, then the chin down. So the booty's in the air. And now we're gonna slither through, let the hips come down, cobra pose, slither up through the ribs. And as you exhale, let's go right back down. Let's please repeat that. If you have a tighter lower back, just have the hands wider away like this. Do it again. Inhale, push down through the legs and the arms with the chest. Use your exhale to lower. Let's do like five more. A good re repetition here of your cobra pose. Again, wider hands will give you a little more ease on the lumbar. And just be mindful too as you're going through these that the legs aren't collapsed out and the heels aren't falling apart. Imagine you're squeezing something in between your feet or in between your inner thighs. Okay, you guys, the next time we come up, we're gonna hold it just for a moment. Just for a moment, challenging the fullness of the heart. And on exhale, lower yourself back down, child's pose. So from here, you can widen the knees. Let the feet come narrow, really easy. Just go right back into the shape of the child's pose. Forehead to the mat, or you could turn your head to the side if that's more comfortable for your nose to not be on the ground directly. And just come back to a really full breath. Remembering these first moments of class when there was an intention and there was a focus, a goal that you set for yourself. And pulling back into that priority especially if the process of moving a little bit and breathing deep maybe brought up a shift of focus or a challenge of the focus. It's so normal. And so we just, we pause, and we come back to the intention. 
two more breaths here. Yes, and as you inhale, keep the legs as they are. Just lift yourself back up. So you're basically in all fours, but the knees are still wide and the feet are still together. Cool. Inhale, twist your right arm up to the sky. As you exhale, thread the needle. Glide that right hand all the way through. So simple. Land on the right shoulder, right side of the head. Left hand may scoot forward a few inches or so. So it's in a good place to push and twist. And similarly to my dialogue earlier, see where you can soften a bit more. Where can you relax a little bit more? Where, where are some of those like, you know, default tendencies you might have of clinging on? Stress, maybe it's the gut, the jaw, the eyes. And where can you unwind a bit of that with your own inner awareness? Final breath here. Move the left hand back near you, so it's in a good place to push up off of it. Inhale, twist your right arm back up to the sky to unwind. And exhale, switch. Put your right hand down. Inhale, twist the left arm up towards the sky. Cool, you guys. Exhale, thread your needle, cross it underneath you. Left palm faces up. Lay on the left shoulder, lay on the left side of your head and potentially move the right hand a bit more forward or even out to the side as needed. So the twist can feel a bit supported by a, a slight push to that right arm. And again, where can there be a, a little more softness, a bit of a letting go? Final breath and take a moment to put the right hand back in a good push up place. Inhale, twist left arm up to the sky, open the belly, open your throat. And exhale, return to all fours for downward facing dog, curl your toes, lift your hips. And again, a little pedaling or a little movement of your choice, walking it out. Step your right foot through between the hands and put your left knee down on the earth. Widen the right foot out to the side and lower down onto your elbows. This is where that couch cushion or if you happen to have a yoga block could be helpful. I'll demonstrate with the yoga block that I have here. Runner's lunge. We'll spend a few moments here. It doesn't mean you have to stay here like a statue. Right? If there's an adjustment that you like to make, let the right toes maybe turn out a little bit, the knee can widen. Maybe the left knee wants to scooch even more back, giving yourself more of a challenge or more of a more depth. <laughs> you know, just come right back to that softening and that breath, and where can there be maybe a little less tension? Two more breaths. Stay longer if you need it. Otherwise, let's slowly rise up to your downward facing dog. Take your time. Paddle out the legs a little bit. Sway the hips side to side. 
Right away, we'll do left side. So glide the left foot forward between the hands, right knee to earth, elbows to a block or the earth, or couch cushion, whatever you got. <laughs> yeah, don't feel like you have to stay where you first started. Maybe explore with a little more width between the foot, the left foot and the right knee. Widen it out more if you like. You can rotate the toes slightly out, letting the knee open a bit. Back in with the breath here, full big ribs as you inhale. Nice softening as you exhale. Two more breaths. Friends, you can stay longer if you need it. Alternatively, let's keep moving. Rise yourself up. Find your downward facing dog. <clears throat> Pedal out your legs. Pedal out the hips. And we'll pull forward, plank pose, knees, chest and chin, coming back down to the belly, nice and easy. And then prop yourself up on your elbows. So it's sphinx pose. <clears throat> Lengthen the legs back. You might even lift, you know, lift a leg, make it longer, lift the other leg, stretch it longer. Elbows are below your shoulders. So sometimes I see people doing sphinx with elbows for their back. So make sure they're below you. So you actually feel like you can kind of chill out here for a little while. Hands are out in front, close the eyes, and work towards, again, a liquid nature of the body right now. Let the low back really soften. And breathe into any sensation that you have. And for some of you, it might be more than others, depending on your spinal um, mobility. There's not a lot of sensation right now. We're gonna to move towards a seal pose. If this is enough for you, I invite you to stay here. I don't want you to overdo it on your back. The trick with this is don't push the floor away. To lift your elbows, please pull the earth towards you. Pull. Your triceps will turn on. Yeah. You wanna feel as you're in seal pose that there's not a crunch. You're not low, you're not compressing the low back ever. <laughs> You're pulling the earth towards you and then rising up. And then use an exhale to come back down. You can soften it, okay? You can optionally repeat that a couple more times, a little flow. If this pose right here is sufficient for you, you do not have to lift your elbows. Whatever you're doing, allow the belly to open and the sensitivity to yourself, to your back, to your spine, to these high, the very valuable places of our body, our lumbar spine, you know, the ability to tap into the sensations there. Next time we come down, let the elbows go wide, make a little pillow for your head, and turn your head to either side so you're comfy. Yeah. Just kind of relax here, let all the muscles go, very similar to what you would do in Shavasana. And I invite you to focus on belly breathing, what I love teaching here, because the floor gives such a direct feedback to how much space you're creating with the breath. So as you inhale, think of it like a Santa Claus belly. There's this huge push of the tummy with the back lift, let the hips or either the sacrum, you might feel an elevation on the inhale. And of course, the exhale, notice it softens back down.
continue a few more here, even adding, as long as you're not pregnant, adding a little breath retention. So at the top of the inhale here, you can hold the breath for a moment, feel all that good, healthy space of the body. And similarly, on the opposite end of it, on the exhale, holding that emptiness. It's called four-part breathing. Again, if you're pregnant, please don't hold your breath. Keep the breath going. Otherwise, you know, either way, it's, it's such a nice way to observe our reaction to uncertainty. When the breath is held, especially at the exhale, the exhale when we're empty, that can be a really scary and uncomfortable place to linger. So just noticing in an in a observer way of yourself, how, how do I respond? How does my nervous system respond, right? Not even just my mind, but what does my nervous system do when I'm uncertain when the inhale is gonna come back? Let's do three more full belly breaths here on the belly. Really slowly coming up to all fours, friends. Lift your chin, lift your head, take your hands by your sides. Do a really soft push up to all fours. Wag your tail, open the hips, go left, go right. And notice within this all fours, since you just did some pranayama, some breath work in the belly, there's probably more sensitivity in the gut in this place where our immunity is, is made stronger, in this place where we hold so much feeling. Cool. We're gonna get ready for pigeon pose. So, so simply curl the toes under, lift your hips up, downward dog briefly. We'll start with the right leg. So lift the right leg, you can bend the knee again, open it, rotate it a little bit as we started with earlier today. And then glide the knee through. Put your knee behind your right wrist. Make the right calf angle below you. Scoot your left knee way, way back. And descend yourself down to your elbows. Maybe to your forehead. Arms can reach out in front of you, kind of like, well, just like child's pose, right? Different legs, obviously. If the knee, the right knee is uncomfortable, you could put some type of support under the right hip. That can help reduce any knee pressure. However, if that doesn't solve the problem, I'd invite you to not do pigeon pose because you don't want to hang out here if the knee is screaming at you. And instead, you thread the needle, which is laying on your back, pressing your right ankle or the knee, binding the hand behind the left leg. Wherever you're at, we'll be here for about one full minute. If the sensation becomes too intense, you can come out early, shake it out, do some cat cows, whatever the body calls for. But if it's just intense, if it's the kind of intensity that you know it's, it's a healthy level of intensity and you'll, you'll really have to, to, to monitor that on your own right now. But if it's just an intensity because maybe this is a space of a hip you haven't been in, in a little while, or it's again stirring up some uncertainty or discomfort, I'd encourage you to stick with it a little bit longer. I'd encourage you to be with the discomfort and see what, what kind of is, is being held behind that tension, or behind that resistance. Similar to the breathing we were doing on our bellies, but the breath exaggerate itself. OK. 
gathering all of who you are in the moment in the inhale and the exhale, maybe letting a bit go of, of the old you or maybe some of these old patterns of, you know, not just our inner physical patterning of, of self, but, you know, our, our outer patterns of how we moved through the world, how we interacted with space and with time. One more breath. Nice and full. We'll simply rise up, stay longer if you need it. Otherwise, let's come back up, find a down dog. If the tabletop sounds more your speed right now, please go there. Otherwise, just shake out the leg, move it around, maybe a little flow if you like your chaturangas or it needs chest chin. Cool, cool. Let's go left leg. So as you lift that knee, first bend it and pump it around a bit as we did earlier. Do some circles or shakes of the leg. Yeah, get it pulling. That's it. And then glide through when ready. Knee goes behind the left wrist on the ground. Left shin is diagonal. Scooch right leg back. Make your way down. Don't expect it to be the same. Even if you're an avid yogi who's on your mat every day, it's not uncommon to have an imbalance in the hips. It's actually quite normal. And slightly asymmetrical beams. <laughs> so if maybe the side you have to back off a little bit more, maybe the side is too much on that knee for whatever reason, lay on your back, do the figure four as an alternative. Let yourself be, be one with the breath. Breath is the priority. Breath helps the focus. And the breath, it, it, you know, it communicates with the nervous system, kind of very simple how acupuncture works, a good massage, right? It helps us to, to calm down, to reset. As the intensity builds in the pose, because it will, that's one of the things about some of these more restorative, deeper postures, is it's typically a little easier in the beginning. <laughs> and as the body sits in it, then we really unravel. Right? So just again, notice your reaction and your ability and the uncertainty to stay there for yourself, to hold strong to what you value, the intention you set. Let's do three more breaths, three more breaths on this side. Again, final down dog. Okay, slowly work your way up to the hands. Curl toes of the right foot under, elevate your hips, and do a little walk out of the legs of the feet. We'll have a seat and bend the knees, face the long edge of your yoga mat, and just stretch the legs out into a V shape. So it doesn't have to be full splits. Okay, we're all different levels. If you have full splits and you want to do them, go for it. <laughs> for most of us, a V is sufficient. <laughs> Work the hands underneath your hips and widen the pelvic floor. So we're trying to untuck the pelvis. Stretch the toes to the sky, inhale, as you exhale, forward fold. Again, a, a prop could be helpful here, a block, a pillow, a bolster. Um, we're not gonna hold it quite as long as a yin class might, um, but we will spend about a minute here. So make yourself cozy. Now 
the breath to guide you and encourage again a fullness into the back of the ribs, into the front. And forward folds every so often if you're feeling a little stuck, like you could go further, but you're not sure why you're not. A half lift is super helpful. So you can just lift the elbows a little bit, do a length, try to get the tail more back and the belly a bit longer, and then exhale to fold back in. Like we find a little more space to lean into. Do two more breaths here. Unless you're having a really good time and you don't want to come out quite yet, I invite you to do that. Otherwise, start to work your way slowly up. We'll go to butterfly pose next. So maybe props out of the way. Hold butt, hold underneath your knees to easily bring the feet to touch. Similarly, inhale, get a lift, try to open the pose behind you. Exhale, take a little fold. And this is a nice place too to give yourself a little um, soft massage on the feet. Really easily, just thumbs into the arches, the ball of the, of the feet while you're here. This is an intense stretch for you if it feels overwhelming in your inner thighs. Just take your feet a bit further away. Give it another go and see if that allows you to enjoy the hip opening aspects of butterfly pose without straining yourself. Two more deep breaths. Nice friends on the inhale, slowly make your way up and hold your knees on the outside to help them come back together so some muscles can stay chilled out. We'll lay on our backs. So in your own way, you know, scooch where you need to scooch forward or back on your mat. And lay down on your spine prep for a deep twist. So the thing about a deep twist that we're going to hold for a little bit longer is the hips aren't going to start square. So do this. Keep the feet on the ground and scoot your hips to your right a few inches. Okay. Now that the hips have scooched, extend the left leg out, pull your right knee in, and then cross the right knee over. And then even still, if you feel like you could benefit from a little more scooch, use the left foot and take the hips even more to the right side. So that way the spine is a little bit longer. Reach your right arm out, hold the right knee with your left hand. If you have low back pain here, or if it's really pinchy, use your block or your bolster below the right shin, below the right um, lower leg, the right calf. And that might give you more access to relax in this twist. It's always a bit trickier to breathe when you're in twists because you're twisted. <laughs> but do your diligence. Focus on breathing into the whole rib cage, the front, the back, the sides, the up and the down. And notice where you're clenching, where you're still trying to overwork. <laughs> Let it go. And 
Do two more breaths here. Stay longer if you need to. Alternatively, inhale, slowly come back to center. Place your feet, readjust your hips so they're centered on your space. And before we go to the other side, then just lay in the center for a moment. Put your hands on your tummy and take some breaths to feel the lift and the lower of the abdominal area. And let's return to you know, harmonizing with yourself, with your flow, with your inner energy, inner spirit. And of course, for the other side. So again, we don't want to just go right into it. We want to create balance. So scooch the hips to the left a good few inches. Then the right leg goes out. Left knee crosses over. Find your way to your twist. And again, even still, you don't have to stay right there. If you want to scooch the hips even more left, please take a moment to do that. So again, I really want you guys to be able to soften into this twist. And again, if the left leg would benefit from a little more prop, a little more support if the floor feels too far. Place a, a block or a cushion underneath that inner left uh, calf, inner shin. Close your eyes. And soften into it. And what you'll probably notice is through the course of the minute or so that we're here is you're gonna get deeper. The body will slowly start to melt all those little tense areas. You'll get lots of good releases. Two more deep breaths, friends. And we inhale, start to find center, unless you need to stay longer, that's cool. Use your feet to readjust your hips so you're again squared and centered. Pause again, let's keep the feet flat on the ground, knees bent, and just touch the tummy and take a couple breaths, letting the body have a chance to assimilate that before we jump into the next uh, shape, next posture. Okay, a little happy baby. So you let the knees come up, feet, feet lift. You either hold behind your knees. This is a great modification if holding the feet's a little too far for you. Rock yourself side to side. Otherwise, reach up for the outer edges of your feet. Pull the knees to the sides of your body. And at the same time, you can start to sway, of course. At the same time, try not to let your tailbone pop up excessively. So that really kind of becomes the effort of the work here is getting the spine to the earth, the tail to the earth, really, as you flow. And then another icing on the cake is to extend one leg out at a time. So adding a little hamstring stretch, one leg goes into extension, keeping the bind, and then the other leg might. And then bring the bottoms of your feet together. Active butterfly for a moment, just work the knees out wide. Then passive butterfly, bring the feet to the ground or the, you know, keep, take your butterfly legs to the ground so the bottoms of the feet touch. Feet are on the earth, knees are splayed wide, arms can go wide or they can also again go on the belly so you can feel your breath. 
this is a lot on the inner thighs. Again, you have your you know, blankets or bolsters. You can put them below the knees on either or both sides. If you don't have that as an option, another way to do this would be to do one leg at a time as an alternative, right? So one leg could actually go out, the other leg stays in butterfly, kind of like how a tree pose um, is, <laughs> but you lay down. And after a few moments, eventually switch. Right? Give you the choice to give yourself the level of challenge that you need and is appropriate for you. Again, notice where, where is the tension? Where does it sneak in? <laughs> where are your spots, kind of the tickly spots or the tense spots? Use your breath, use your mindfulness to untwine them, let them go. So I invite you to stay here. If you're feeling some really good release happening, stay in butterfly. Otherwise, it is time for Shavasana. So Shavasana could be here. Otherwise, lift the knees up, widen the legs out. As you straighten your legs, take a moment to untuck your pelvic floor once more. So you can actually just use your hands like so and just, and just lift and, just, and broaden, broaden the glutes. So the belly has a, a length to it. You can even move the ribs away from the hips. And then stretch the arms as wide as you like. Personally, I love cactus pose and shavasana. Anywhere the arms want to go, close the eyes. And maybe even place something over your eyes. If you have a, like a t-shirt or a eye mask, you know, eye, those are really nice. Any weight on the eyes really helps with releasing and letting go. Calm down the whole body. Let go, let go, let go. Avoid controlling the breath here. Just allow it to be natural, easy. We are at the end of the hour. It does not mean that you have to get up. <laughs> I will leave the music going for us, for you, for another 10, 15 minutes to hold space for you. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight. Look forward to the next time. Happy Earth Day. Namaste.